Hey everyone, Coach Robert here with another opening refutation. Recently, this variation of the Russian game has been taking off in popularity, and it's called the Stafford Gambit. It's one of the most famous and, and well-known at this point for people who are just learning how to play and are looking for opening ideas. And um, so here's how you get into it. So this is our starting point for the Russian game, also known as the Petrov defense. And the most critical line is probably knight takes e5. This was played in the recent world championship match between Carlson and Nepomniesh. And um, the normal way that things go is with d6. And we'll typically drop back to f3, although we also have the option to play knight d3. This is one of the world champion's choices in this position. And there's also a really wild and wacky arm flailing line with knight takes f7. But Black takes the initiative and tries to steer things away from the more mainstream lines with knight c6, and this is the beginning of our Stafford Gambit. It's called a Gambit because after the main move, knight takes c6, there's no way that Black is going to recover the pawn. They have to take this knight on c6 since there's no other reasonable alternative. And the most active choice for Black is to take with the d-pawn, so that's why this is the main line. And here, the pawn on e4 is hanging, and White has to deal with this. Um, white has several active moves that guard the pawn. The most common sense one is d3. Although already, um, if you face this as a starting player and you you played along normal lines, you might have run into some trouble because you, you don't want to play d3. You want to get your bishop out to c4 and play things in a more normal and intuitive way. Well, one of the nice things for black about the Stafford Gambit is that if white tries to play naturally, they're just too far behind in tempo, and black actually is essentially playing white in this position. They just have enough extra moves because they can get out this bishop. Um, they can play bishop c5 quickly and often kind of with a tempo. They have better center control because the queen is looking at squares like d4. And um, yeah, they're slightly ahead in development too because of knight f6. So this combination of factors means that white has to play something different from maybe what they had originally intended by playing this opening. And the recommendation that I'm going to share with you is to play d3, because we're, we have to kind of admit that if we put our bishop on c4, it could just become a tactical target. Um, two ways that a bishop on c4 could hang might be a move queen d4 with tempo, or more likely bishop c5, and then before we um, get a chance to consolidate, they might play bishop takes f7, and if we have to I'm sorry, bishop takes f2, and if we have to play king takes f2, then queen d4 would be a double attack on the bishop and the king. So this is these are a couple um, general reasons why bishop c4 might be poorly placed in this line. Another reason we should not put the bishop on c4 is that we actually need it to guard the critical g4 square. In the Stafford Gambit, you often want to put one of these minor pieces on g4, if not both, like you put one, then the other. Um, so d3, it looks like it's limiting our options, but it's actually just admitting that we're going to develop the bishop to e2, where it really belongs. That's the best square. Um, black will pretty much certainly play bishop c5, since this is the most active, and when you play gambits, you have to play very actively. Um, bishop e2 makes sense. We're trying to castle rapidly and defend our uh, light squares, but we're actually not going to castle immediately. It's good to have it as an option, but we need to do a little bit of preparation first. The reason being that Black Stafford Gambit idea is mostly to play h5 here. And if we castle, we can castle into a more or less blistering attack because when we castle, they will get moves like knight g4, which is pressuring both h2 and f2. And with queen h4 coming up shortly after that, it's not really sufficient to play a move like bishop f4 to try to bring it to guard both squares. There's, there's going to be some tactical problems with that. Additionally, even if black is dissatisfied with attacking with the pieces, they can attack with this pawn by pushing it all the way to h3. So castling, not the right time. We do want to eventually, but we should consolidate first. We should get rid of the pressure on our uh, king side. And the way that we do that is with c3. There are other ways you could play, but I think this is probably the simplest. Because all you have to do is remember this basic idea that when you play c3, you're giving up the option to play knight c3 because we actually want the knight on a better square. We want to put the knight on, for example, c4 or f3. And the reason for that will become evident when you also inspect how after c3 we are preparing d4. So this combination of knight d2 and d4 
is pretty much what White will play no matter what against the Stafford Gambit. Um, let's look at an example. Let's say they play knight g4, just kind of what they what they normally do here. They're pressuring f2. What black really wants is for us to castle so they can play queen h4. But here we don't do that. The move c3 prepared d4. So now we can close the dark squares. And in this situation, I'm not sure if they should play like bishop e7, bishop d6, or bishop b6. It doesn't really matter to me for our analysis because we've already accomplished our goals as white. For instance, if they go here, we can continue with knight d2, and we just have to guard our weaknesses. And we can play knight c4 and get rid of that bishop if we really want to. That's part of why this knight is well placed. So that's one idea. If they play a move like queen d6, it's kind of similar. We can play knight d2 here. And if we play knight c4, it's going to hit the queen. It's pretty nice. And also, if we need it for purely blocking purposes, which I doubt, you could always bring it back to e3. Or use that knight on c4 to support bishop e3. Sometimes when black gets knight g4 in, it makes it hard to um, develop your dark score bishop because it really wants to go on e3, but that score is attacked twice. So if you bring support with knight c4, you can play bishop e3 and finish your development. So this combination of moves is going to help you finish your development, and white is just better, so I consider this a refutation. It's not necessarily the top engine approved line, but it doesn't have to be because white has um, several good options against this. So here's a sample. Maybe black plays bishop b6 prophylactically. They're saying, I want to see if white castles on this move. Here, we don't do it yet. We finish our development first, knight d2. And after knight g4, now we play d4. This is the combination. Whenever they attack f2 with the knight and the bishop, we play d4. If they put pressure with the queen in some other way, we're going to block that too. So we're just going to block everything and then finally castle. All right, well, I hope this is useful for you. Um, my goal is for this to be a really, really short way of getting started against the Stafford Gambit so you can keep learning the main lines. If you need anything, just leave a comment. I'll happily answer any specific questions you have about this line or any sub-variations in this line. Thank you. Take care.